In the previous two videos of this four-part series on how to play Chain of Command, we looked at various aspects of the rules, including activations, command dice, movements, and other important rules. If you haven't seen those parts yet, this video will make more sense if you have an idea of the fundamental rules of the game, so I would suggest going back and watching parts 1 and 2. You can find their links in the video description below, or on the How to Play playlist of this channel. In part 3 we're going to look at how units fire, how they close assault, and how support weapons work in Chain of Command. So, without further ado, let's get started. Along with movement, the other most common activation that units will undertake is firing at the enemy. However, before any unit can target an enemy, they must be able to see them. Units normally have a firing arc of 180 degrees and can hit an enemy unit that they can see within that arc. If a unit is firing out of a window, this is reduced to 90 degrees, but they also benefit from being within cover. An enemy unit may be targeted if there is an unobstructed line of sight between the firer and target. If there's a large feature, such as a house, this will block line of sight. Units can only target enemies who are within 4 inches of the edge of a heavy woods or similar dense terrain. Similarly, a unit may only fire out of a heavily obstructed terrain feature if they are within 4 inches of the edge. This means that the only figures that can actually target the enemy with no block line of sight can fire. Firing is directed against individual teams. Multiple enemy teams that are within 4 inches of each other and visible to the firer are classed as one team for the purpose of targeting. This means that damage taken from the firing will be split across them equally. Once we know who can fire at who, the next step is to work out the firepower that the firers possess and what the range bands they fall into for the chances of hitting. Each weapon and chain of command has its own firepower rating. For example, a bolt action rifle has 1, a magazine fed line machine gun has 6, tripod mounted medium machine guns have 10 and so on. There's a full table of the firepower of the various weapons along with their ranges. In chain of command, for most infantry weapons there is no long range, and if you can see a target you can generally fire at them at either close or effective range given the size of the gaming table. This is a realistic ground scale that a lot of other games don't have. Games Workshop, I'm looking at you. The number of dice rolled in the attack is equal to the combined firepower of the weapons firing. The final number is counted to provide a number of dice to be rolled. Scoring to hit is calculated by the quality of the target, not the firer, and the range band that the target is within. With the results read from the roll to hit table, the higher the roll the more likely a hit will be achieved. Hits are then spread equally between the teams, and when we know how many hits have landed on the target, each one is rolled again on the hit effect table. This result is affected by the cover that the target is in. Kills mean that figures are removed from the game, the shock result means that shock is applied to the team. There are other infantry weapons which are useful in the game, grenades for example, and they have different rules for their use. I'm not going to cover them here, so you'll have to buy the rules to find out how they work. Sticking with the infantry combat, there will be times in a game where the opposing forces get close enough to engage in close assault. Any unit which moves within 4 inches of another unit that it can see and has a clear line of contact with will be included in this close assault. Close assault in chain of command is simple and brutal and gives very quick results. Each figure involved in the close assault equals one dice. Then the total number involved is the initial dice pool. This is then added to or subtracted from by working down the closest combat table. If one side is outnumbered they may run, but if both sides stand and fight, then the players roll their dice pool, and each five or a six causes a kill on the opponent, with each six also causing a point of shock. The difference in the amount of kills caused on each side will determine the result, from fighting another round to one side breaking in panic. Close combat is quick, nasty, and an outnumbered side will suffer heavily. Be very wary of it. Given the level of game in Chain of Command, large artillery pieces are rarely found on the battlefield unless they're serving as an objective for a scenario or similar. But there are some support weapons that will be featured as part of a force's support, and these include field guns, anti tank guns, and mortars. Larger mortars will usually not be on the table, but may lend their fire from off table. On-table guns will be activated as a team with a command dice roll of 1 and have to have at least a crew of 2 to operate. As these men are trained for their particular trade, others cannot take over when they are killed. Larger off-table mortars will have to be contacted to fire a barrage before they can affect the game. Calling a barrage will occur on the first activation of that observation team when they roll a 1. On the second activation, the player places the naming points within sight of the observation team and decides immediately if they are calling in a full barrage or an aiming shot. The observation team then rolls two dice, with a score of eight above being on target. Anything less will result in a deviation on the aiming point, and the aiming point moving a number of inches in a random direction, depending on how off target it is from the aiming dice roll. Using an aiming shot allows the aiming point to get closer to the target in subsequent activations, 
by adding a modifier to the deviation dice to reduce the deviation. A barrage will cover an area of 18 inches square with the aiming point at the centre. Each team under the barrage may be hit by rolling a number of dice indicated by the firepower dice of the particular weapon. This is also why it's important that the aiming point is not close to friendly troops, so they don't get caught in the fire. Also, mortar fire will create an area of smoke covering the 18 inch square, which will also block line of sight from the explosions of the dirt flying around. Barrages will continue firing until they are activated again, when they are either stopped with that activation, or they will stop when the turn ends. If this happens, a chain of command dice can then be used to continue the barrage after the turn has finished. So that covers firing, close assaults and support weapons. In the next and final part of this series we're going to look at vehicles, how shock and morale is handled and also just how to build your forces for a game of chain of command. But until then, thanks for watching.